S. That's right, folks. C for comedy. A for Abbott. M for Maxwell. E for Ennis. L for Lou Costello. Put them all together and they spell Camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a Camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking Camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Hey, Costello. Costello. Come over here. Where... Where in the world have you been? Hey, Abbott. What? I just come from the movies. They were showing a wild Bill Elliott Western. I never saw so much shooting in my life. Oh, never mind that. Bang, Wait bang, a... bang, 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 bang. Hey, hey. <laughs> How in the world did you get that big hole in your hat? I was sitting so close to the screen that wild Bill Elliott mistook me for one of the wrestlers and I got hit by a stray bullet. Oh, <laughs> you idiot. Why do you always go to those Western movies? Because my next picture's going to be a Western, Abbott. And I'm going to be a bad man. I can see myself now holding up the bank. I got a gun in each hand, a handkerchief tied across my nose. Why do you have the handkerchief tied across your nose? I may have to blow in a hurry. I, uh... <laughs> after I stick up the bank, after I stick up the bank, I'll climb on my old faithful old sombrero, stick my six shooters into my Holsteins, tie my chaps around my throat, twirl my corral over my head, and ride off into the old bandanas. Ah, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> What does that mean, Costello? How should I know? That's cowboy talk. <laughs> that, be, that should be some picture, Costello. Who's going to be your leading lady? Marilyn Maxwell. Marilyn. Dear old Marilyn. Marilyn plays the part of the richest girl in the West. She's got thousands of head of cattle. I know. And you try to win her just to get possession of her cattle. Shame on you, Abbott. Do uh, I look like the kind of a guy that would marry a girl for her prime ribs? I, I look you. <laughs> look you, nitwit. If you want Meryl Maxwell to make a Western picture with you, why don't you, why don't you make her the star? Do a classic Western story. That's a great idea, Abbott. We'll film the story of Annie Oakley. Uh, do you know the story? Certainly I know it. Annie Oakley was a very famous girl. Uh, she was a very famous girl. Where, where was she born? She was, she was... Huh? Where was she born? Where was she born? She was born in the town of Wyoming that was named after her. The town of Bashful. Bashful? Bashful, Wyoming was named after Anne? Sure. Ain't you ever heard of Cheyenne? Cheyenne. Wyoming? <laughs> Now, look, Abbott, from now on, keep your big mouth shut because I gotta finish the story. Okay, go ahead. Now, one day when Annie was a little girl, she looked out the window and she saw her father shooting the sheriff. And he was scared. So she immediately. You mean the sheriff was in jeopardy? Yes. And then, 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 then. Could I have that again? I said the sheriff was in jeopardy. Yes, he was a jeopardy sheriff. Jeopardy. (laughs) Boy, did I get out of that one. Abbott, why don't you let me tell this? Now, you get out of here. Go on over to the craft music hall and show them what a real hunk of cheese looks like. Oh, (laughs) no. Head with your story. Okay, now one day Annie was eating a big bowl of cornflakes. Her father rushed in screaming, Annie, I found nuggets down by the creek. No, 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 you mean he screamed, I found a bonanza. Yeah, he's, he, he screamed what? Bonanza, bonanza. How do you like that? Now he's putting bonanzas and scream on the cornflakes. <laughs> no, you don't understand. You see, Lou, in the story, the father found a bonanza and he split it with Annie. Yeah, they had a bonanza split. Uh... And... <laughs> yeah, but shut up. They're laughing before they're supposed to laugh. Now, Annie decided to go prospecting, so she put a solid gold saddle on her horse and rode away. Wait a minute. And, and Why did she ride on a solid gold saddle to go prospecting? Because every time the horse hit a bump, she struck it rich. She's right. Uh... <laughs> oh, stop this silly stuff, Costello. You should be ashamed of yourself cooking up a ridiculous story like that for a picture to star Marilyn Maxwell. I'm sorry, Abbott. Uh, you should be. But I love Marilyn. I was only trying to figure some way to make a hit with her. Well, I don't blame you, Lou. She, she really is lovely. Why, I could fall for her myself. Abbott, at your age, you don't fall. You collapse. Ah. <laughs> There's only one thing wrong with our romance, Abbott. What is that? She's pennywise. Marilyn is pennywise? Yes, I ain't got a penny and she's wise to it. Oh. <laughs> Hey, look, it's Marilyn Maxwell. Oh, Lewis. Lewis, I wonder if you could come over to my house in the morning and take me out for a driving lesson. Oh, you bet. Hey, Abbott, she loves me. Marilyn, you do love me, don't you? See that you adore me. See that you're mad about me. Uh-huh. See that you think I'm wonderful, that you dream of me every night, that you think I'm adorable. Mm-hmm. And I'm the handsomest, sweetest, cutest, dearest little dumpling in the world. Mm-hmm. Oh, Marilyn, you say the nicest things. 
Well, I've got to go now. Don't forget, Lewis. Tomorrow you're going to take me for a driving lesson. Goodbye. Oh, Abbott, isn't she wonderful? She gets so much out of a goodbye. <laughs> I don't know. She's not the only sand on the beach. But she says goodbye. But that she, sends me. She's not the only sand on the beach to me. Yes, but she's so nicely piled. Ah, yes. You, <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. Why did you promise to give her a driving lesson? You, you don't even have a driver's license yourself. I don't need one, Abbott. I haven't even got a car. And another thing. <laughs> no car? No. This is terrible, Abbott. You've got to help me out. How can I teach Merlin to drive without a car? Ah, don't get excited. I'll stick to you and help you out. We, we'll just have to rent a car. Where can we get one? Uh, you drive. Me drive? No, you drive. I said I drive. You don't drive it. I drive it. Drive what? Uh, you drive. <laughs> Why should I drive when you want to drive? I'm going to drive. Look, Costello, I'm renting a you drive and I drive it. Then we both drive it. Uh, no, no, we do nothing of the kind. I drive. When I say you drive, I don't mean you drive... I mean that I drive, although it's a you drive. Oh, when you say you drive, you don't mean me drive. You mean you drive because I don't drive. Now, now you've got it. Now, I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, look, Abbott, you go to a place to rent a car. Yes. And you are driving the car. Yes. Where am I sitting? You are sitting right next to me. Is there a steering wheel in front of me? No. Then you're positive that I'm not driving. I'm positive. And you're driving the car. Yes. All right. What kind of a car are you driving? You drive. Somebody better be driving! No, 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 Costello. Look, I'm trying to explain this. We go out and we rent a car. Right. Where are we going to get it? You drive company. Now I drive company. I thought you, I, and Merlin were going all alone. You don't understand. It hurts you drive. Well, if it hurts you drive. That... <laughs> now that's right. That's right. This is getting worse. Don't you see? The head of the company's hurts. That's too bad. What hurts him? That... <laughs> Nothing hurts him. Every company has a head. Naturally. Now, this company's head's hurts. Then let him take an aspirin. Uh, listen. <laughs> listen, Costello. It hurts you drive all over the country. If it hurts to drive all over the country, why should I drive Marilyn Maxwell and get hurt? Both of us is liable to get hurt. No, yeah. you, no you, won't, you won't get hurt. It's Hurt's company. Hurt's company? Yes. But I don't want to hurt nobody. Look, Abbott, will you go with me to Marilyn's house tomorrow? Why? Well, her mother thinks I'm the biggest jerk in the world. So? I want her to get a good look at you. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher. Remember during the war when the man who sold you cigarettes would sometimes shake his head the moment he saw you? Then, as he said, Too bad, Joe. No camels today. You answered with resignation. All right. Give me whatever you've got, then. I feel like an experimental station for cigarette brands. I've smoked so many kinds during this shortage. Yes, and trying all those different kinds of cigarettes during the wartime shortage sold you more than ever on camels, didn't it? And friends... That experience was repeated throughout America. The experience of smoking whatever brands they could get taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. Then, smokers' T-zones, that's tea for taste and tea for throat, tried more cigarette brands than they'd normally try in a lifetime. The result was that smokers found they were happiest with Camel's rich flavor and cool mildness. Today, more people smoke Camel's than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Now, while you light up a camel, Skinny Anna sings, Gotta Get Me Somebody to Love. Like so long, oh so long on the prairie. Gotta get me somebody to love. Gotta find one who's kind and not contrary. One who rides by my side, hand in glove. I got my heart, got a silver saddle. But there's one thing I keep thinking of. Like so long, oh so long, on the prairie. Gotta get me somebody to love.
the Lord, oh so long on the prairie. Gotta get me somebody to love. See how that moon shines so bright above. I gotta get me somebody to love. Costello, since we couldn't rent a car, let's ask Mrs. West Wetwash. You know Mrs. Wetwash. If she'll lend, uh, lend you one of her cars, what do you say? Oh, good morning, Mr. Rabbit. My, aren't you a little old to be carrying a balloon? <laughs> oh, pardon me, it's Costello. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, you really look sharp today. But isn't that an odd dress you're wearing? Oh, it's just a little thing I wear to tease. Tease who? Boris Koloff? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Wetwash, Costello would like to borrow one of your cars. He has a date to teach Marilyn Maxwell to drive. And he wants to put on a big front, you know. Big front? Yes. Oh, he'd better get a wheelbarrow to carry the one he's got now. Costello. <laughs> <laughs> um, Costello, why are you always chasing that Marilyn Maxwell? What's wrong with me? My late husband always said I had an hourglass figure. Oh, yeah? Well, maybe you ought to stand on your head and let the sand run back. I... <laughs> Costello, will you cut that out? Look, Mrs. Whitwash, you're a kind lady. Why, just last night I dreamed that you loaned me one of your cars. Well, mm -hmm. when you dream tonight, mm -hmm. drive carefully. You know, Abbott, I got a sneaky feeling that she ain't gonna lend me your car. Oh, never mind her, Costello. We've got to get a car. Hey, look, here comes Skinny Ennis. Let's ask him. Hey, Skinny, I wonder if you would like oh, to... Oh, no, Costello. I ain't going to lend you my car. How did you know I was going to ask you? I read the script last night. <laughs> so long, fatso. Abbott, remind me to get that skinny in back to Bob Holden. Oh, never mind him, Gus. <laughs> Get six points. Never right. mind him. Now, look, if you're going to teach Marilyn to drive, there's only one thing to do. Buy a new car. Now, look, Abbott, you know I ain't got enough money to buy a 1947 car. Oh, you don't have to pay all cash. You just put up a down payment. I put up a down payment? That's right. <laughs> Where do I put it up? <laughs> the place where you put it down. Make up your mind, Abbott. Do I put it up or do I put it down? When you put it up, you're putting it down. You mean I put it up and put it down at the same time? That's right. What am I buying, a car or a yo-yo? No, no, no. <laughs> you tell me it's very simple. In order to put a payment up, you've got to put it down. So you see when it's down, it's up. How can it be down if it's out? It's only up if you put it down. Just a second. I'm going to buy a new car, right? Right. What do I put down? The jack. And what do I put up? The jack. How do you like that? I ain't even got a car yet. This mug's got me jacking it up and down. <laughs> you idiot, come with me, please. We go, we go in this new car agency, and I'll show you how to buy a new car. Hey, Abbott, look at all those new cars. This guy has so many 1947 cars, you'd think he was a used car dealer. <laughs> Good afternoon, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I'm Dr. Choker. Doctor. Do you have to be a doctor to sell automobiles? Well, you see, I make all the new deliveries. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend Costello would like to buy a 1947 car. Oh, fine. Something around $3,500? Or would you like to spend a little more and get into the medium price field? <laughs> hey, yeah, but this guy puts it up before you can put it down. Now, here's a lovely model. The back seat makes up into a bed, and you can sleep in it. Oh, a four-snore sedan. <laughs> Just look at the advantages. The look, look at the advantages? Yes, look at the advantages of this car, Mr. Costello. You've got a radio, heater, sun visor, and lights. There are headlights, backup lights, rear lights, parking lights, search lights. What's the search light for? Well, that's to find the switch to put on the headlights. <laughs> Then it's got fog lights, smog lights, and hog lights. Hog lights? That's in case you're on a country road and a pig runs in front of you. <laughs> well, we'll take it. Good. Now, of course, you'll need seat covers. How about these red seat covers? They'll do. And you'd better give me a set of blue ones, too. What for? To keep the red seat covers from getting dirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we're ready to close the deal now. Put up the down payment, then you're paid up when you put it down till the next down payment comes up. <laughs> Let's not get into that again. Yeah, take my 50 bucks. $50? $50. Young man, you're in the wrong department. 
step through that door onto the lot and walk south. The further south you walk, the cheaper the cars get. Keep going till you get to the $50 car. Come on, Costello. There's the 42s, 1941s, 1940s, 1939s. Nineteen twenty threes, nineteen twenties, nineteen nineteens, nineteen seventeens. Abbott, I'm tired. Ask that salesman over there in the big straw hat where the cheaper cars are. Uh, hey, you. Where are the uh, fifty dollar cars? Two miles south in Mexico City. <laughs> How do you like that? We walked all the way to Mexico, Abbott. Take any car we can get. I can't walk another foot. Here's a very fine car, senor. They not make cars like that today. They'd be crazy if they did. <laughs> what kind of car is it? That's the original Kaiser car. Who's that old guy with the black mustache sitting in the front seat? That is the Kaiser. <laughs> If you like this car, you can put up the down payment. What's that? How was that? If you put up your 50 pesos, your down payment will be up. How do you like that, Abbott? Now they're doing our routines in Mexico. <laughs> Camel presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro-Golden-Mayer, producers of The Beginning or the End. For camel fans everywhere, here's Marilyn to sing the Basin Street Blues. Won't you come along with me down the Mississippi? We'll take a boat to the land of dreams, steam down the river down to New Orleans. The band's there to meet us Oh, friends to greet us Where all the light and the dark folks meet Heaven on earth, they call it Basin Street Basin Street is the street Where all the dark and light folk meet Land of dreams, New Orleans You'll never know how nice it seems Or just how much it really means I'm glad to be, yes sir On Welcome Street, dear to me Where I can lose those Basin Street blues Aren't you glad you came with me Down the Mississippi Where all the light and the dark folks meet Heaven on earth they call it Basin Street Heaven on earth they call it Basin Street Every time you smoke a cigarette, you are consciously or unconsciously testing it on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat, your true proving ground for any cigarette. And there's where camels make a hit, right on your T-zone. Try a camel and see. See if your taste doesn't especially go for camels' rich, full-bodied flavor of choice tobaccos. See if your throat doesn't approve camels' cool mildness. Then you'll understand why so many doctors like camels. You know, three leading independent research organizations asked 113,597 doctors, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand name most was Camel. 
Yes? According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Look, Abbott, there's the place where you get a driver's license. Over there. Now, Costello, when you go in there, you must act with dignity. That's right up my alley. And you must act with confidence. That's right up my alley. And you must know the answers to all the traffic laws in California. Set them up in the other alley. <laughs> Look, you dummy, you've got to get a license if you're going to teach Marilyn Maxwell how to drive. Yes, Abbott, and when I get her into the car, I'm going to propose to her, and I'm going to give her my cat's eye ring. A cat's eye ring? Sure. I bought it through an ad in the paper. It said, wear this cat's eye ring, and your house will be full of love. And is your house full of love? No, it's full of cats. I... <laughs> Come on, now, let's see. Which one of these officers issues a driver's license, Costello? Uh, here. Try that door over there. Okay. I won't run for mayor anymore. I'll never run for mayor anymore. Who was that? Louis B. Mayor's horse, Busher. <laughs> Come on, Costello. Marilyn's waiting for us. We've got to find out where to get that driver's license. I'll ask that woman over there. <clears throat> Pardon me, miss. Can you tell me where the driver's license... Well, where... if it isn't Mr. Orbit oh. and Mr. Costello... Oh. Hello, you fart little mon, you. I didn't expect to find you here. We didn't expect to find you here. Or we wouldn't have been here. Quiet, Costello. Uh, what brings you here, miss? Oh, I stopped by to get new licenses for my two automobiles. <laughs> my Plymouth and my Hootson. Plymouth and Hootson. Oh, Abbott, that's like a Studebooker or a Pootie. <laughs> Well, I must be totaling along. As they say in Spanish, Lueta para scuda en la vista to you. And a wet barracuda in a kisser to you, too. <laughs> hey, Castella, there's the license inspector. Tell him what, what you want. Go ahead. Mister, I want a driving license. Very well. Step right up here. What's your name? Lewis. John L. or Strangler? <laughs> No, no, look, mister, this is Lou Costello. Oh, yes, now I recognize you. And you're Mr. Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I always listen to you on the radio. Mm. Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> Why, my wife and I almost die laughing. <laughs> you know, especially when you open that closet and all the stuff falls out. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not us. You're thinking of Burns and Allen. <laughs> Oh, no. I know Burns and Allen. Uh, you know, he's the one that always hollers, Hey, Abbott! Now, look, Gracie. I mean Abbott. Will you tell this guy I want a driver's license? Oh, yes, yes. Now, first of all, I'll give you the eye test. We insist on perfect vision. Now, let's see. Uh, where are you? What? I'm standing over here. Oh, oh, yes, yes. All right, Mr. Costello. <laughs> Now, put your left hand over your right eye. Left? Right. Wait a minute. Make up your mind. Right or left? Costello, it's very simple. A man wants you to put your right hand over your left eye, which leaves your right eye left. Oh, oh, oh. He wants me to put my left hand on my right eye because the one on the left is right, and that's the only one left. That's right. Well, which is it? Right or left? Uh, look, you, you cover your left eye. Yes. Now, your right eye is left. How did it get over there? <laughs> Idiot, your eyes don't move. Who am I? Influence? I... <laughs> boys, boys, now, I'll make it easy for you. Costello, put both hands over both eyes. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Now, are you sure you can't see anything? I can't see a thing. Now, no fair peeking. Mm -hmm. Pom, pom, cookity coo. Where shall this or that one go? Shall it go east? Shall it go west? Shall it go under the cuckoo's nest? <laughs> Oh, I like this. This is fun. <laughs> now, I'll hide, and you find me. Well, I'd like to, but I'm a busy man. A busy, busy man. Uh, here's your driver's license. Goodbye. Well, let's go, Costello. Now you're ready to take Marilyn Maxwell for a driving lesson. <laughs> hey, Costello, there's Marilyn waiting at the curb for us. Ah, oh, there you are, Lewis, honey. Well, I'm all ready to go. Say, how do you get into this car? Wait a minute, and I'll open the door for you. Hop in. 
Now, Marilyn, now, keep your eye on me, and you'll see me really do some driving. First, I step on this, release that, press this, and step on the gas. Uh, Costello, what happened? I'll tell you as soon as I climb back into the front seat. <laughs> oh, Lewis, we're coming to a stoplight. Apply your brakes. <laughs> Oh, Lewis, did you step on the brakes too hard? I wasn't born with this windshield wiper on my forehead. <laughs> oh, please now, please, Lewis, drive a little slower. Isn't this beautiful, romantic country? Costello, now's your chance. Go ahead and kiss her. Marilyn, would you mind if I... Would you... Would you... Um... I know, Lewis, you want to kiss me. All right, go ahead. Well, aren't you going to kiss me? Marilyn, my bad self tells me to kiss you. My good self tells me not to. Well... I'm a bad... Look out, Costello. Watch where you're going. There's a fork in the road by that big red barn. Don't worry. Either I'll take the road to the left or the road to the right. Lewis, make up your mind. I will. I can go to the left or go to the right. Or through the barn. <laughs> oh, Lewis, I'm so sorry. You smashed your car all to bits. Yes, and now I won't be able to give you any more lessons about driving a car. But, Lewis, I know how to drive a car. Huh? I wanted you to take me to the country club. I want to learn to drive a golf ball. How do you like that? Now I gotta go out and dig up a down payment on a golf ball. <laughs> Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarette. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Bedford, Massachusetts, U.S. AAF Station Hospital, Fairfield, California, U.S. Naval Hospital, Charleston, South Carolina, U.S. Marine Hospital, Galveston, Texas, and Veterans Hospital, Thomasville, Georgia. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week. Our rebroadcast press to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now back to Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Well, Costello, you smashed your car, but don't worry. You can deduct the loss from your income tax. Abbott, do you know anybody that can help me with my tax? Oh, certainly. Next Thursday, I'll get my brother to help you. You know, he works in the bank. Oh, yes. My mother told me to ask you, Abbott. What does your brother do in a bank? Uh, tell her. I will, if you'll tell me. <laughs> I just told you. You told me what? Tell her. How can I tell her if you won't tell me? I just told you, tell her. Tell her in the bank. Tell her in the bank. Why can't I tell her at home? I'll get him out of here. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Listen to Abbott and Costello next week and hear Luke Costello make his, his income tax assisted by Bud Abbott's brother, who's a teller in the bank. Don't tell anybody that I told you he's a teller because I promise not to tell anybody he's a teller and I wouldn't want to be known as a teller who tells. Mr. Pipe Smoker, does your pipe have pipe appeal? Does it delight your taste with a rich, full flavor of its tobacco? Does it please your tongue because it smokes cool and mild? You'll answer with a resounding yes if you're smoking Prince Albert in your pipe. Prince Albert's ripe, mild tobacco is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. It's crimp cut to burn slow and cool. Get Prince Albert for pipe appeal. Make a date with Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry Saturday night on NBC. You'll find new delight in American folk songs the way Red Foley sings them. The Duke of Paducah and Minnie Pearl and many others will also be on hand. That's Saturday night for Grand Ole Opry with Red Foley. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.